Hey guys, welcome to Doing Things Dan's Way. Today I have a decision to make. Is this barbecue worth saving or is it ready for the trash? Uh, as you can see, this thing has really had a, a rough life. I've had some pretty major flare-ups in this, uh, but at this point it is in pretty rough shape. So the question is, is it worth refurbishing? And if so, how? Hello, Crow. And, <laughs> and if it's not worth saving, well, what should I do with it? If there's something else I can do. So uh, let's take a close look at it and just kind of see where we're at and uh, how bad it is, because it's pretty bad. Without a cover on it, it has seen better days. This whole top here is pretty crowded up. Lots of nice cobwebs. Front control panel, despite being made of stainless material, looks like it's kind of rusted. Uh, inside, man, a little hard to film black, but if I take the grate out of here, <laughs> what you can see is there's carnage. Here is one of the biggest piece, maybe here's, no, that's not a bigger piece either. This is all that's left of the, what is supposed to be the flavorizer bars. Wow, um, this guy's really, really gone. Uh, back here, this tube, I kind of forgot what this is supposed to do, but it looks like it's gone too. It's missing completely over there. Um, this tube is completely shot, as you can see. There's uh, massive holes in it. If I turn it on, you see a flame come way out to here. It's in bad shape. Um, let's take a look underneath. So going inside, you can see we've got all oh, nice big chunks of rust in here, and then up here is a whole other story. Um, yeah, it's missing most of the bottom uh, piece that's supposed to be there. You can see kind of the outline of it. I'll pull that out next. The bottom pan's got some rust on it, but not as bad as I might expect. So, and then lots of Lots of cobwebs and spiders and other gross stuff in here. So let's take a look at the back. Okay, so back here, yeah, we got rust, uh, cobwebs, other typical stuff. Look at this. <laughs> wow, this is supposed to be a whole shelf. And look what's left of it. It is completely gone. Uh, and this is supposed to be what protects stuff from dripping down on top of the propane tank. So it's no wonder the propane tank has some um, uh, goobers and stuff on it as well, but not too bad there. Um, wow, yeah, bad shape. Hey guys, gonna jump in here for a second. Um, editing this video, I, what I'm realizing is it'd be really great to give you some vision for where this thing ends up. So let me show you real quick the end of the story, the rest of the story, and let you decide if you want to watch the rest of this video from there. Because what I found is that there's a lot of content here on the process of all the sanding and refinishing and painting and what you guys really want to see is does it turn out like something I would want to have. So let's kind of jump to the end for a couple seconds. I'm going to show you what it looks like a little before after and then we'll kind of dive into the process of actually doing all the work to clean it up. Back where we all started. <laughs> now that you've seen how bad it really is, uh, I'm not ready to give up yet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this thing out into the yard here where I can just make a big dusty mess and pull it all apart, uh, vacuum it all out, and take a better, closer look at the, the core inside. Uh, I know I can buy like grates for it and grills, but uh, and flavorizer bars and stuff like that, but it is the core, the structure of it right? If this is a salvage car, I would ask the question, is the frame bent? So let's uh, pull it out here. We'll just kind of fast forward and see what it looks like. Okay, well, this looks pretty horrible. Uh, <laughs> there was almost two inches of uh, 
debris stacked up in there in certain spots. I've spent way too much time grilling and not enough time cleaning this thing historically. As you can see, visor tubes are uh, still in, but the part that they attach to here is uh, falling out. Uh, it's one side's completely rusted, so that's not going to work too well. Uh, I'm going to go and pull out all the tubes and uh, that back rod completely and see what we find out under all that. What we have now are all of the igniters wires are still attached down here, so we need to disconnect these guys. Okay, at this point what we have is a grill kind of cleaned up and it looks like uh, this bottom piece I should probably take out. It's got six bolts, which is why I spent some time getting each of these six uh, nuts uncovered for. So now I'm going to pull this out and just continue cleaning and cleaning and getting all the muck out of here and see where we end up. Okay guys, here's uh, day two of this little uh, project of working on the barbecue. So you can see <laughs> the carnage we have here. I have it completely dismantled uh, down to its firebox. You can see all the components there, all the shelves and everything else are pulled out. Uh, and over here we have the top as well as the overall frame. And this is like some of the worst damage. Um, to the box that I found as far as structure is concerned. So this really is not a big deal. It's, I mean, it's not pretty, but it's not destroyed. So the plan right now is to get the pressure washer up and running and go ahead and pressure clean everything uh, and then do a bunch of sanding uh, on stuff just to get it down to bare metal on the outside of the box and get that all spray painted with some uh, high temperature black paint 
uh, and a couple of different colors just to give it some some pizzazz. All these chrome bits, like the handles and stuff, I mean, they're they're shot. They're they're pickly or prickly uh, corrosion on it and stuff. So I'm just gonna buff it all down, shoot it with paint, um, and yeah. So that's kind of the process we're gonna fast forward through right now. Okay, so now that we have everything pressure washed and cleaned off, I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna hit it with sandpaper and scuff up all the black surfaces that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint black. So let's get to that. I won't lie, this is taking a long time. I spent several hours sanding my hands or like cramping. Um, but this is what you're going for is that, you know, kind of grayed out look on everything. Uh, sanding gets all the, the gunk off uh, and you should end up with clean sandpaper. If you got greasy looking sandpaper, that means you're, you're sanding through grease. So change the paper, otherwise you're just smearing grease around uh, and the paint won't stick to that. So it's kind of pointless to even sand uh, unless you uh, end up with a nice dry powder at the end. So uh, I still have the whole chassis to do, the whole firebox to do, uh, and one other shelf. I'm just uh, going through the pieces, but this is taking a lot, a lot of time. Um, I'll guess probably three hours of sanding uh, total. Um, and I'll probably go to like a palm sander or something that, that can be slower than just kind of digging in with your hands, but my hands are kind of dying, so I might switch to that. Um, but Otherwise, this stuff's all going to be looking great once it's repainted. So uh, I'm just kind of excited to see what the final final thing looks like. Uh, this guy, I'm going to try and get some kind of polish for. Um, you know, try my my automotive uh, polishing with maybe some real fine grit um, uh, buffing compound or something. And see if I can get the haze off of it and get this back to a nice uh, bright uh, stainless steel look. Uh, up under, inside, and inside inside the firebox. You know what? It's it's a firebox. I'm not gonna do much more than what I've already done, which is just pressure-wise, pressure wash all the, the junk off it. Um, there's no point in making it look bright and shiny inside. Just, you won't even be able to see it with the grates. Uh, so anyway, that's where I'm at now. I'm gonna keep going. Now in here, a couple of products I'm using. Um, I tried using this. This is uh, hammered. Uh, it's, it's not chrome looking. It's just kind of a silvery, whatever tone. And it just I used it on the handles, and it just didn't look right. It actually kind of looked like the aluminum of the uh, over here is the cover. And it kind of looked like this piece before I sanded it down. This is aluminum, and it was all pitted and corroded, and all the paint had fallen off. Um, so that's that one. Here is the same one uh, that I've primed. And this is an aluminum primer. I'll show you that product. Um, this is the Rust-Oleum 
professional aluminum primer. I bought this to do the hood of a Ford Explorer, uh, which is aluminum as well. So with the all, with the exact same issue, it's pitted and the paint had started to come off. So I'm using that. So this is the front grill. Again, very hard to to show, but the left half is all bright and shiny, except for the letters kind of being worn off a bit. It looks really fantastic, and over here is the original. You can see all the painting and all the gross rust and stuff. And over here, we're pretty much back to a bright and shiny with a number of little black pits and other, you know, imperfections. But the difference is really remarkable. <laughs> okay, so it is really hard to make a video of chrome. It's just because of the reflections from it. I'm trying to find a way to show this to you. So this side is nice and shiny. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it actually looks pretty nice. This side is faded. It has, still has this line from, I don't know what this was, a set on here that left a, a bit of an edge. And you can just see this is all yellowed and gross. This guy here is shiny and very, very smooth. It feels like a just waxed car. And let me show you how I got to that point. So these are the products I'm using. Um, a medium cut, this is Meguiar's. Uh, it's a mirror glaze. This is a seven out of 10. This will leave pretty good scratches in my car if I use it. So it's, it's a heavy cut. I would, I would not call it a medium. It's really trashes your clear coat. You have to use fine and then even finer to get all that, get the cuts that this guy puts into your car out. But ultimately this, on this material works fantastic. So I'll give this guy a good shake. Now I haven't done any work on this one yet. And again, I don't know how well this is gonna video, but you just, just gonna buff it just like you're buffing a car. Now there's a, a, a grain to this stainless steel that's kind of this direction. So I've been starting off just kind of doing swirls to just cross cut all of the debris and then finishing up going with the grain. I mean, I'm doing this one handed holding the camera, so I'm not exactly working too hard. And if I polish off that, you can see it is substantially cleaner. So get some elbow grease out, grind away on these guys, get them cleaned up, and then uh, then I did, I followed that up with uh, the fine cut cleaner that helped to get the heavy cleaner off uh, and just kind of polish it better. Uh, and then once I got it really, really cleaned up, I'm going to try using just uh, a simple car wax product to, uh, to finish it off. So that's, that's what I'm doing for uh, the stainless and it looks remarkably new compared to what it was before. Now, elsewhere in the garage here, I've, I have you know, sanded down and I'm in the process now of, uh, of painting all of the other body parts. Um, I'm focusing first on hitting, just putting uh, light coats on all of the, the rusty areas. This is the worst spot of all, where the corrosion cut all the way through. Um, and you know, just hitting all of the, the rusty spots inside and out with the first shot of paint before I do any heavy coats. So like this whole top part here needed to get done and I haven't touched this at all yet. So I'm kind of starting off like that. Over here I've started to, um, I took all the handles and sanded them down and they have this, it looks like this is made out of brass or something. That's just like another surface treatment um, that was under the chrome that was there. So it must have been a two, a two shot kind of deal. So take that and I've primed I've primed it uh, to create just a first coat, just a good, good sticky uh, paint design, you know, that's classified for painting over plastic. Uh, and then I'm still going to end up using the hammered, and this, this is the stuff I'm using ultimately for all of the black surfaces that are not, um, that don't get hot. So this is this uh, Rus Universal Hammer Rust-Oleum Paint Primer. You can see here, you know, differences between fours and afters uh, with this paint and this is that uh, this is not the this this is the fine textured stuff 
Um, I also found when I'm spraying, you don't want to just kind of go like squirt, squirt. You want to just do full sprays. You try and like cheat it and do stuff. I got a drip, a couple drips came out of the bottle. So you do want to be more just deliberate start before you, before you touch the side and just go full strokes back and forth across it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So right now I'm going to hit up this guy and go ahead and do this guy as well. Uh, here I'm using a high heat uh, capable spray in this bottom uh, part of the pan here because this, this is going to be, you know, this is going to get hot when this burner's on. So this is smooth, it doesn't have any of that nice texture to it. This is the second coat. This dries really, really quickly. This is all going to get really hot, so we're going to use the, uh, the high heat spray again. Resist heat up to 1200 degrees. I'm just going to light coat the first coat, since that's right over primer. This shouldn't be a ridiculously hot part of the, of the, the barbecue, because the, the burners are up higher and the heat's going up, uh, and fresh air is actually coming in this way. So. I think it's, it's reasonably safe to say I can go ahead and spray over all of this with the high temp and uh, it should be fine. So back here on this burner, I'm going to mask off this inside and spray the outside with the, uh, the hammered uh, textured paint. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to uh, 
get out of the fumes for a bit and work here on the side of the house. Um, and yeah, just go ahead and finish polishing up this uh, instrument panel. You can kind of get the idea of the technique I'm using. Uh, it's just the simple Meguiar's uh, heavy cut and lots of elbow grease, just smear it around. Now this will uh, eventually actually remove the uh, the ink on the front of the control panel, so I'm going to try and be mild around those areas so I don't end up with a patchy set of instructions on the front. <laughs> um, like one section already is here on the, on the side that I worked on. But uh, anyway, this is the process. Here you can see all the parts put together, uh, pretty much ready to be reassembled. Unfortunately, I lost the clip of us reassembling it, uh, but you get the idea here. See this piece is cast aluminum, and the uh, the threaded the Phillips head on the on the, the bolt basically stripped out. It was totally rusted. So here I just had to mask off this area and then use again the aluminum primer. Okay, so on the side here, because it's all torn up uh, and discolored, my thought was I'm going to sand the whole thing down with some real coarse 60 grit. And then um, just to give it tooth for the paint to stick to. And then I'm going to use the high temperature paint. So this surface here will get extremely hot, so this is the perfect paint for it. The question is how, how nice is it going to look? This paint, the sides black with the top uh, chrome. I think it'll be okay. Um, I don't like the idea of the, the discolored um, look here because of the heat. You know, this got hot enough to kind of turn bluish and brownish, and just doesn't look nice to me. Here's the big reveal. Wow. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. I like it. Wow, that's uh, the, the final coat on top here of polish. Maybe doing something on the inside there. 
but that looks. <laughs> so much better. Look what we have here. We got ourselves, our order came in. We have four new burners, four new heat shields. And these nice, heavy, stainless grill grids. This is substantially better than what I had before. Back where we all started. Okay, guys. So that's uh, that's a big, big long process. Uh, it looks like I probably spent at least eight, ten hours on refurbishing this thing. It's been a lot of work, but I do it again. Maybe on a nicer grill I would, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, I, I literally found down the street someone that was getting rid of a fully stainless steel barbecue just for free that was actually in better condition than this one. So if I could just wiggle my nose and go back about two weeks, I would have waited and grabbed that guy's barbecue and refurbished that one instead of this one. Having said all that, this barbecue is in great condition. Uh, I've done... Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll tell. I've done multiple dinners on this already. It's been great to have my barbecue back, and uh, you know it's, it looks pretty good. You can see in the clips here. Uh, but yeah, would I do this again? Yeah, probably. Maybe I wouldn't disassemble it quite as much. Uh, but now, literally everything about this has been completely refurbished. All the the big rust has been taken completely down, and it'll last another uh, number of years. I've also learned how important it is to clean your barbecue. Uh, more often than once every hmm, 10 years. So at least every season, open it all up again, clean it all out, take the burners out. If you do this regularly, things will keep continue to work like the screws. So you won't have anything rusted shut. Uh, that's my, my key advice. So anyway, that's uh, doing things Dan's way. Uh, if you like what you see, hit subscribe. Uh, a couple other videos up here that you can take a look at, uh, but we'll catch you next time.